G'day folks, this is my tandem silent air compressor. I've had a couple of people asking now about how to build one using refrigeration compressors. Uh, basically they work quite well unless they for some reason some of them do siphon a bit of oil out as they run. And I haven't encountered that using these compressors. These are Danfoss compressors by the way. Um, obviously if the compressor is siphoning oil out as it runs that's not a good thing and I'd advise trying to find one that doesn't. But apart from that, they seem to work very well. I'm using an old uh, welding gas cylinder, an argon cylinder, for my pressure reservoir. I know it's probably illegal to use them for things other than welding gas, but since it's a nice solid pressure vessel, I decided to use it. It was only going to go through the crusher anyway, so I'll save that one. Pressure's controlled by a uh, Ranco refrigeration pressure control system. I have to max out the uh, rise pressure to get 100 psi in the tank but the differentiation switch works very well. It'll kick in after roughly 150 kPa drop. Right now it's holding about 90-95 pounds. Basically all I have to do for this tandem unit is construct a filter in this case I use the filter dryer canister. You don't have to use a filter dryer, I mean the dryer element will pack up with moisture before a couple of days anyway. Won't take long. But the filter aspect of it does its job. You could use a regular air filter or an automotive air cleaner or something like that. The discharge manifold is just a piece of three quarter inch copper pipe. The little risers coming off the discharges on the compressors. Not to say you need two compressors to do this, you can run just one big one or one small one, it just depends on the size of your tank and how long do you want to wait for it to charge up, or more importantly how much air do you want out of it. It's all uh, 240 volt AC powered, my safe little power ward system there. Generally there's not more than one or two devices running off it so you can use power boards for this area. I have the pressure switch hooked up here on the outlet side. Discharge hose is connected up via a mech union. And I've got my big pressure gauge up the top. That's actually from a fire uh, fire sprinkler system. But it works just as well on air. Uh, this little one here I built using a surplus air tank. Uh, the tank's brand new and so is the switch. It came from my neighbour who bought one just for the compressor pump discarded the tank. The compressor is just a commercial single cylinder reciprocating compressor. Uh, this is the original discharge hose from the compressor. I had to replace this one since I knocked the thin aluminium tube that goes up here and broke it. So you don't need to worry about press fittings. These com normal compressors cost roughly 50 bucks each so they're pretty cheap. You just rip the noisy old AC compressor off the top and put a fridge compressor on it. The discharge side, I've used flexible hose instead of copper manifolds. And the uh, suction inlet here goes through the filter dryer canister again and into the housing. It runs pretty damn quiet. I'll just plug it in and power it up. It has a little unloader valve on it which takes a bit longer to snap shut. The compressor doesn't put out as much volume, but it does stop leading the air once it reaches a set pressure. charging. Of course it's very slow. I wouldn't recommend using it for inflation tyres or anything like that. But it doesn't make much noise. It's very good for airbrushing. Especially when you don't want to wake people up in the middle of the night. And I'm always out here until all hours of the day so having a noisy compressor running out back is not really an option. That's why I use the twins up on the corner. There you go. 
I'm only just making 25 pounds an hour. That is slow, but they do work. All this switch gear here is just for the compressor. Some of them don't have any of it. Some have a couple of capacitors and a relay like this one. I'll just dump a bit of air and see if I get this one to fire up. Right on 75 pounds. And they just sit there humming. No noisy compressors to wake the neighbours up. And that rises a bit quicker than the other one, considering the volume of the tank. These tandem compressors are normally used in a commercial fridge or something reasonably large. They each have a start capacitor, no run capacitor. I was going to use this control panel for a compressor system, but it'll probably never get used now. From a big semi-hermetic chiller compressor. Done. Realize cut in and switched it off. Back up the pressure. And when it comes to actually building a silent air compressor, it's really up to the user to determine what kind of air output they want, how much power they can consume, and just how big they want the whole package. I mean, this is just a tiny little compressor from a. Uh, I guess you could use them in a small water chiller or. Uh, a splashy machine, some sort of very small domestic or commercial refrigeration application. And that's a uh, liquid receiver from a, so a large commercial meat chiller condensing unit. You can use a pr pressure vessel of your choice just as long as it's rated to the kind of pressure you're putting into it, or at least overrated by it. I mean, you want to put 200 pounds in it, make sure it can handle at least 300. As for the housing, well, the sky's the limit. You could use an old computer case or something, or a briefcase. The line work can be done in copper, although keep in mind vibration and shock movement can crack lines. Um, if you're only going up to, say, 100 psi, there's nothing wrong with uh, conventional rubber hose and hose clamps. And as always, just check to make sure your compressor doesn't start pumping oil out with it. You don't want oil coming through your airbrush or whatever else you're using it for. I'm sure there are designs on the internet to build an oil trap for these things though. So I'll leave it up to my viewers to decide how to build their silent air compressors. I know No Box 7 wants to build one. And a couple other mates of mine are interested in it. And likewise a vacuum pump, you can also use these suction outlets or inlets as a connection for a vacuum line and these things will pull a pretty significant vacuum.